Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Jamie the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm bringing you some DIY projects that I think have a pretty high-end feel and look, and they're all incredibly useful, and they're beautiful home decor pieces that you can have in your own home. Doesn't matter what kind of style you have, it doesn't matter if you like farmhouse, or if you like modern, or you like glam, a lot of these are very, very transitional and can be used in a lot of different designs. Before we get into those though, I do wanna say thank you, of course, to my subscribers. You know who you guys are, I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for being here. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. My name is Jamie. Hopefully you will stick around and enjoy some of the DIY projects that we're gonna be sharing with you today. All right, guys, let's get into that video. All right, everyone, and for my first project, I'm gonna take this wooden welcome sign that I picked up from 99 cent only store. It was $1.99 and it's about 18 inches long, which is great. It was retailed at $6.99 and I was able to get it for $1.99, so I was super happy. I also grabbed some of this garland from Five Below. If you're lucky enough to find the eucalyptus garland from Dollar Tree, then you could certainly use that. I have not been that lucky. And then I did grab this great oversized grapevine wreath. This was picked up at a yard sale for $3. The first thing I'm going to do is take my welcome sign outside and I am going to spray paint it white. I did take it off of that uh, backing that it comes with, but uh, I just used that to uh, just kind of, you know, put it on there while I was doing the spray painting. I'm using a flat white matte paint from Rust-Oleum. I use this a lot and I really like the coverage and I'm just making sure that I'm getting in and around and everything. Now I'm going to take my eucalyptus garland which is 40 inches long and you have a couple options here. You can wrap it around but I think that that really wastes a lot. So what I actually do is I cut my garland in half and when I cut my garland in half I am giving the illusion like I am wrapping it completely around my uh, I was going to say my vase, around my wreath here, and it makes it look nice and full, and I really love the effect that this is giving. So as you can see, I'm just kind of taking those pieces that I cut, I'm just kind of sticking them in the grapevine and then working my way around and then securing them once again in the grapevine, and I am going to do this with the other garland as well. So I did end up using two 40 inch bundles of garland, but this is a pretty big grapevine wreath and it's also a pretty thick one. So once again, just kind of doing that same thing, kind of uh, cutting this in half and then just tucking that in between that grapevine as I worked my way around. Now that it's all set and done, my welcome sign is also dry. So I am going to start to adhere that to my wreath. For this, I'm just gonna go ahead and take it and glue it kind of in those higher spots on the wreath form itself. Now, the great thing about that wreath is that because it is wood, the regular wood glue that I'm using from Shore Ponder is going to work perfectly on this. And all I'm literally going to do is just take some of my glue, put it in each corner and boom, you've got the most amazing looking welcome wreath. I love this so much. I've been wanting to do something with this grapevine wreath that I grabbed at that uh, yard sale quite a while ago, and I am super, super happy with the way this one turned out. My next DIY is going to incorporate something that I found at the Dollar Tree in Los Angeles. This is a collapsible wreath stand. And I thought that this was actually really, really cool. It has a hook at the top where you can hang a wreath from it, but I have a different plan. I'm also going to use some of these wood skewers and then, of course, that welcome windmill that you saw. Can you uh, take a guess on what I'm going to be doing here? <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is you can see this part that doesn't really stay um, kind of on either side of this. So I'm just going to take some floral wire and I'm going to go ahead and just wire this and make sure that it does stay completely open. I don't want this to be collapsible anymore. So I'm kind of preventing that from happening. Again, I'm just taking some of my green floral wreath uh, wire. I think I even picked this up at, uh, I'm pretty sure I picked it up at Michael 
Staples and uh, maybe even Dollar Tree, honestly. And I'm just going to go ahead and wire these to the frame. And then I'm going to go ahead and also tackle the backside as well. Now, for the backside, I did just kind of trim off some of that extra. And then I'm just going to bend this up. That way it does stay in place and I can kind of help keep everything nice and secure. And then again, I'm just going to take some of that wire wreath wire and just wrap that all around there. After I did that, I did add a little bit of hot glue just to kind of help hold it in place a little bit. And um, because that, that side actually does slide back and forth and up and down. And I obviously want this to be as sturdy as possible. Now, you will notice because this is a wreath form uh, stand, it is uh, kind of leaning back a little bit. And it's doing that obviously because of the wreath that would have to be on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim the bottom of mine. That way everything will stand nice and flat. And I'm literally just taking my lineman pliers, lining them up against my work surface. And as you can see, it worked out perfectly for me. Now I'm gonna go ahead add some hot glue and just a little dab in the middle there and I am going to take a bamboo skewer that I cut and I am just going to outline this entire lower half of my um of my windmill here and uh, I'm going to cut off any of the extra excess sticks you could certainly pre-measure these and cut these if you wanted to. It's kind of in a hurry, to be honest. So um, I just did it this way, and it did work out fine. I just made sure everything was good and hardened. And then I just, um, you know, took those lineman pliers and just hacked away at it. And as you can see, it worked out really well. Now, I'm going to use that base to start building my crisscrosses. And I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way up. And I'm going to do it on all three sides of my windmill. So I'm going to go ahead and just take some of my all-purpose hot glue from Shore Bonder. And uh, I cut down the stick to the first kind of crisscross size that I wanted it to be. And then I'm going to just mimic this and just continue to go up and down all the way on the side of the windmill until I'm completely covering the other sides or all of the sides, I should say. Now, I'm just kind of using that one that was there as my guide. And then as you can see here, I'm gonna go on the back side of it. And I'm literally just going to start crisscrossing my way all the way up to the top, or at least almost all the way to the top. For one side of the uh, windmill, I'm putting the sticks on the outside. And then for the other side, I'm putting the sticks on the back side. And this prevents it from um, kind of bubbling or bowing. And it also keeps it nice and flat. So hopefully that makes sense. And when you do try to do this yourself, you'll, I think, understand what I mean by that. So one across the front and then one in the back to complement the crisscross. And then as you will see, as I continue to kind of build my way up, I do have a um, few places that I should fill in there. And I'm starting to notice that actually as I'm going up. The other thing that I did was also add some pieces along the bottom. Um, I didn't want to do a crisscross all the way down to the bottom because I was thinking originally that I was going to stick this out in a giant flower pot that I have outside. But instead, um, this is probably just going to end up being something on my front porch. But I still want it to have that overall wood look. And so I am going to also give this a good, kind of a stronger foundation, if you will. Again, just by taking those wood bamboo skewers and just kind of holding them into place, almost knocking my tower over. And then going on again to the three sides along the bottom. And then also any of that black wiring that is still left that you can see there, I decided to go ahead and cover this with more of my wood skewers here. And I have a couple different sizes in that box, so that's kind of why I was searching through there and uh, trying to find the ones that are about the right size. And again, I'm just gonna cut these down and then just glue these right into place making sure that everything is solid and everything is holding up well. And uh, then I have a completely covered wooden windmill, or at least, you know, a wood and metal windmill. Now it's time to take it outside and to get it spray painted. 
And for this next part, I'm going to take my lineman pliers and I'm going to go ahead and just separate these. I want the windmill and I do want to keep the welcome sign as well, but obviously the kind of blade part of the windmill, we're going to be using that at the top of our windmill. So I'm going to go ahead and just get in as close as I can with my lineman pliers there. And then I will go ahead and take another smaller pair of wire cutters and just trim that down a lot closer on the windmill portion itself for that welcome sign. I'm just going to kind of straighten that out a little bit. And we're going to take these out side and spray paint them a dark steel. Now, for whatever reason, I didn't film the part of uh, spray painting the windmill and the welcome sign, the dark steel color, but it's a dark steel from Rust-Oleum. And then I'm using Rust-Oleum's matte black for this here. I love the way that this paint is, and I really do like working with this. I use this a lot, obviously, in a lot of my DIYs. And for this, I actually only needed to do just one coat. Now that everything is dry, these are the dark steel pieces again. It is time to start assembling our windmill. So for the welcome sign, I just kind of figured out where it would fit the best on the windmill structure. And it's going to be right about here in the center where I'm adding some of my hot glue. For the hot glue, I am just gonna add some in the middle and then on the end. And then I'm gonna take my welcome sign and I'm just going to press it into place and just hold it until that glue sets up and holds it really, really nicely. And then at the very top where that little hook is, I added just a tiny bit of hot glue and the windmill itself, because because it has a little hook on the back of it, I will be able to hold that into place. And you've got the cutest garden windmill. I love the way this looks. This stands about 18 inches tall and it is so cute and it looks so much more expensive than it really was. I think I paid, what, $3 for this if you include the price of the skewers. You can use it on your front steps. You can use it on your front porch. I think that there's a lot of great uses for this and I really, really love the way that this looked. All right, everyone, and for my next project, I'm going to be using these wooden drawers that I picked up from Target's Dollar Spot. They were $3 each and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all of the plastic and all of the goodies. The great thing about these drawers is one that they're pretty sturdy. As you can see, I just knocked one over, but uh, they also have those great finger holes in there, which means these drawers probably come completely out. You can easily turn these around and it gives you a nice flat front that you can create something totally unexpected. I'm also gonna be using some of this adhesive diamond wrap and also some wood jingle blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my shore bond wood glue and I'm just going to add some to the top of my boxes and just create a stack here with my three kind of uh, drawer frames I guess is what the proper word is here and then for the diamond wrap I'm going to cut some long strips and we are going to start kind of facing our drawers and I'm going to take the drawers and I'm actually going to be putting the diamond wrap right on the outside of all three of those drawers and so I'm literally just kind of creating a rectangle trim with the diamond wrap for some reason I didn't show the part where um, I did go and completely close in all four sides of the diamond wrap but uh, I think you understand what I was doing here or hopefully you do because you know sometimes I have some bonehead movements or moments I just had another one I should do bloopers with just voiceovers but then you guys wouldn't have anything to laugh about while you're watching my videos all right so now I am going to go ahead and just complete all three of my drawers and get those completely covered again I'm doing it on all four sides which you will see in in just a moment when it's done and then for the actual blocks or the jenga block hand pulls i am going to do the same and that takes about three rows of diamond wrap to completely cover those up so once everything is all done and glued back together it was time to pull out the antiquing wax now for the antiquing wax, I'm literally just going to cover everything in antiquing wax. I'm using one of the sponge brushes I picked up from Michaels. I'm not using the Dollar Tree brushes anymore. I don't like them, they don't hold up. I am going to go over every single part of this with antiquing wax, including the diamond wrap itself. And I'm just going to make sure that I have a nice 
heavy coating and covering of diamond wrap or um, antiquing wax. And uh, as you will see, I'm going to kind of do one section at a time. So I'll get this front drawer here covered and get everything really nice and covered with that antiquing wax, making sure to get into every crack. And then I'm going to take my rag here and I'm just going to start wiping it away. As you will see that diamond wrap still does come through, but it does get a little dulled. And actually that's exactly what I wanted. I was thinking that even if you use the white antiquing wax from Waverly, that this could really be gorgeous then. I kind of wish that I would have used Use the wax, the white antiquing wax from Waverly because this would really be stunning. But this look is also really good for me and it does really go well with my own personal home decor. And since I am going to be using this in my living room, I thought that I might as well just make it what I wanted to do with it. But uh, definitely want to share that idea because I totally think if you used white antiquing wax on this, this could be absolutely gorgeous. I don't think that this could be a bad outcome at all. So again, just kind of repeating that same process, going through covering everything in antiquing wax, and then just kind of wiping it away until it is completely done. I did do all four sides, including the bottom. And then I just simply glued some black beads to the bottom, giving it some feet. And you've got the cutest three drawer kind of specialized jewelry box. I really love the way that this looks. I think if I even spray painted everything and completely covered it, it would almost have a kind of a Moroccan vibe or something. I'm super, super happy with the way that this turned out. And for my next project, I am going to be using some of these floral sprigs from Dollar Tree. I'm not exactly sure which colors I'm going to use. And then I have this compass that I picked up for $1.99 at the 99 cent only store in Los Angeles. The first thing I did was take my compass outside and I spray painted it with this terracotta spray paint. I'm kind of doing small spritzes here. Um, it looks really awkward. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it's actually very windy outside. And I'm trying to make sure that that paint stays on that compass as much as possible. So once that was dried, I took it inside and then I'm going to kind of decide which floral stems to use. I'm not gonna be using all of those floral stems because they just don't all really go well, but I think I'm gonna use this kind of a burgundy one, this cream one, and then this kind of orangey one. And then because these stems kind of have a natural curvature to them, I am just going to take this stems, I'm going to trim them down with my lineman pliers, get all of my stems separated and take all of these pesky tags off and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and just start, uh, separate them into three different piles. That way I can work a lot easier. And then I'm going to start wiring everything to my compass. And I'm literally just kind of alternating my colors and overlapping them a little bit, making sure that those greenery pieces are included with kind of those, uh, they're almost like little styrofoam balls. By the way, if you do grab these, be prepared because there's a lot of fallout with these. These get all over everything. But if you took like a clear coat or something like that, you could spray this down and I think it would be just fine or at least it would help with that. Um, but if you don't mind the mess like I did, then, you know, keep going for it and just enjoy it. Now, I am uh, literally just taking some floral wire and just working my way all the way around the compass until I'm completely covered with my stems. And then I'm going to create kind of a spray at the bottom here or at the south of my compass. And uh, I am going to add a um, bunch of my, um, it's kind of that, uh, Oh, I can't remember what the name of it is. It's like a, uh, it's like ribbon, but it's plasticky and it looks like burlap. I just had somebody send me a whole bunch of it in a friend mail package. And I love this stuff. You can usually only find it in fall, but when it's all done, this is what it looks like on my front door. I think it's gorgeous. I really do like this. It's going to be a hard choice whether I'm going to have this one up or I'm going to have the other one up. But again, I'm super happy with it. 
Hey everybody, it's me again. I hope you enjoyed these projects. If you did, let me know which project is your favorite in the comments below. If you also liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and also follow me on TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook, and all the other things. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.